Welcome back, everyone, and I'm back with more videos. Uh, last couple of months, I've been away, kind of really just working on some projects, and the main project was the IK animation system like Ubisoft. And now that it's finally done, I'm going to start creating videos on every step of the way. And to start with, we're going to be the first two videos are really going to be about some math concepts. And this math concept that I'm going to talk about today, I don't really have a good name for it because it's kind of something kind of just stumbled onto. Uh, with a lot of failures in uh, in the IK stuff, uh, but it really helped me um, get through certain things working pretty easily by going it. the The main idea is to take a quatorian and then creating an alternate direction by using its inverse. Um, this allows me to kind of create this kind of universal direction that all my objects could kind of share. So if I know I want all objects to have the exact same forward direction, and when you're dealing with an armature, it's not true. Everything has their own orientation, everything has their own direction. But by doing what I'm going to show you, actually allows you to kind of create this false uh, direction that you can reuse no matter what axis the, your um, rotating object is. <clears throat> so... So let's see. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just look at a cube, right? So this is our cube. This is going to be our like object that we're going to play with. And right now it has zero rotation. There's no rotation being done to it. So so though it's pointing forward. So you have the yellow line that tells you what is that Quatorian's forward direction is. So that's its forward direction. So what if we want to simply just rotate it? So if we just rotate it by 90 degrees on the y-axis, as you can see, like, uh, we refresh. So now the yellow line is now aligned to the x-axis as opposed to the z-axis. So that means now forward is really pointing toward the left side of our screen. So that, like I said, that's, I'm just rotating the Quintorian. That's all I'm doing. So at this point, what if I decide to keep that rotation, right? So I take that rotation and I invert it. So I invert the, the Quatorian. Then I take world forward, the world forward direction, and then mul and then transform it by that Quatorian, the inverse Quatorian, by the way, the inverse Quatorian of that 90 degree turn. So that gives me my alt forward. So if I go down to here and say, well, I want to take my alt forward and I want to rotate it by our un the, the, the our rotation that is not inverted, and this will give us a new direction that is yellow or green, sorry. So if I go to here, refresh. And there we go. So now you might like, well, I just I just transform the the forward direction and then multiply it by the rotation of of the quatorian. Now the, here's the thing though, when you multiply a quatorian by its inverse, it equals back to its original state. So it's kind of like one minus uh, like um, uh, it's like one minus one equals zero. So it's the same thing, but like the negative one is an inverse. It just brings you back to its origin. So so that that alternate forward direction it points in a whole different direction. Um, I didn't really debug it that way, uh, but you know what? If you for for shoots and giggles, um, I can actually probably do that really really quick. So I'll take this, that, say blue. If we go back here, refresh, and that is actually the direction. That's the original direction. So that is our alternate forward. But we say forward, and then we transform it by the inverse of our rotation that we want to start with. So let's say, like, I have a bone, and it the, the bind pose of that bone is in a certain direction. It's not going to change because that is its bind pose. So by defining the forward direction, that forward direction will always be there when I modify it. So. So if I take away the blue for now, and let's say I want to now apply uh, another rotation uh, on the y-axis in a different way, uh, but it's the same thing, but like this function, it doesn't accumulate correctly if I use the rotate by, but if I use this, it, it accumulates the exact way that you would if you're doing animation. <clears throat> so that's why I'm doing axis rotation in two different formats. Um, so I'm going to want to rotate it by 90 degrees, right? So I'll click Save. 
So right now, the, the, the forward is going to the left direction, and our alternative forward, which is still pointing forward, is pointing forward. Now, if I rotate this cube by another 90 degrees, now you see our the rotations forward is actually pointing back because I did 90 degree plus 90 90 degree. That's 100. That's 180 degree rotation, and you see my alternate forward is now rotated by 90 degrees. Um, and there you go. This gives me this sense of an alternate forward. You can apply a specific direction uh, to it. Um, and I'll show you another, another nice example. Like, you know, that's really a nice, easy way to show it. But let's say if I do like a bunch of weird rotations, like a bone might have, actually have a bunch of different rotations. So this I rotate by Y, then by X, then by Z. So if I do this... So now, now my cube is like in this weird orientation, and I created my alternate forward. So alternate forward is there, right? It's on the dark gray side of the cube, and it's pointing forward. So if let's say if I apply again that 90 degree um, rotation, and I, boom, it does exactly what you expect it to be. It actually rotates by nine degrees on a nine axis. Uh, even though the forward direction of that contorian isn't, it's pointing in one specific direction, it's oriented in a different way because the up, down, and, and the left axes are completely doing their own thing. But because what we, but because we, we create this alternate um, rotation, like this alternate direction based on that specific 90 degree turn, you can say you can look you can look at that that first 90 degree rotation, or not well in this case, this complex rotation, you can consider that our bind pose for like bones. So that's our bind pose. So when we ever do an IK stuff or like animation stuff, we always start from our bind pose and then we move it into the position we need it to be. So by creating this alternate forward, I will always know that forward for that bind pose. And if let's say if I do that for all my bones, that means every bone will always point forward, like on, at their bind pose. And anytime I molt, I change it, that forward direction will then alternate based on that change that's different from the bind pose. So it really actually does help. Like this actually kind of helps me do certain things like um, twist and, um, no, uh, what is it? Not, it's the next video, it's gonna be about um, Swing and twist. Swing and twist is another mathematical thing that you can actually know about quartorians, but I do it purely just with vectors instead of like through a bunch of quartorian math. Um, but this actually helps tw uh, swing and twist work really well for me because if I can define, let's say, like um, a maximal bone, like a, a, maxim a maximal bone, leg bone, actually it's four directions pointing back. And let's say I have another bone, an uh, armature that I'm trying to copy the animation from using IK, but the leg bone is actually forwards pointing forward. They have two completely different orientations, right? But if I want to match them up, I can't. But by doing this alternate inverse thing, even though the orientations are completely different, I can have them both have the exact same equal um, forward direction. It doesn't have to be forward direction. I can do forward, up, and down. I can actually create the entire axis just by multiplying by that inverse quatorian. So this way, I can actually create an axis, an axis, whatever, and then when, when, the, when that object changes from that specific point, you can then measure all these vector changes uh, very easily. So if I, let's say if the bone, like I said, moves like 45 degrees, but even though the, its orientation is completely off, I can just take it that alternate direction and map it to the, the same alternate direction, the exact same alternate direction from the other bone because they're both pointing to the exact same direction at, at the default position. Uh, hopefully you understand what that means, right? So like I said, like even though this orientation is all wonky, I can have another uh, cube with a, another wonky orientation. But if I like rotate this by 90 degrees and say I want to change from that forward direction to the other direction, I have like a, a common place between the two to do that change without doing any crazy quantorian math. It's just just, do, uh, it's just doing simple things with vectors um, and simple tri uh, trigonometry and just angles and things like that. Um, this kind of leads into the swing and twist because that's what I didn't use this for to help me um, change um, things from one to the other. 
So hope you enjoy this. This is a nice neat, neat little trick that I stumble upon. I'm I don't know if there's actually a mathematical term or a concept that goes behind this, but this actually, like I said, really helps me out when I'm doing IK because I can then easily map everything to the exact same direction. So if I know all legs are pointing down, I can just say, well, I'm going to map all the bones related to legs with the down direction. If arms, I know like in T-pose, one goes left, one goes right. And if the bones are slightly off, I can keep that orientation equal. So this way I have a lot more control. So... Um, yeah, so you'll you'll see it as the series goes, uh, as we more videos comes out. But like I said, this is the first step, and like I said, it's very simple. Uh, you just take the cor whatever quartorian that you currently have, and just invert it, and then apply a transformation of whatever direction you want to normalize it, essentially. So let's say I want to keep forward at this rotation. So every time I use alt direction with a new transformation, like here, I use it later after I do a bunch of more transformations on it. I will actually see the difference from that alternate direction. So if my alter, if that's the world forward direction I want to care about, any changes from there, I actually see the difference of visually. So I'm not bound by that yellow line that's all over the place. You know, I don't have, I don't have to compensate for that yellow line. I just create a new line from the starting point that I that makes sense for that object. So uh, let's see how long did I spend on this video. Oh, 11 minutes is going to be a short one, so this is great. So um, I, I guess I'll just end it at that. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, uh, please definitely subscribe. I'm almost at 3,000 uh, viewers. That's totally awesome. Um, the next video hopefully will come soon because uh, because of I live in Jersey, we now have to stay at home and I can work from home. So I'm home more often. So I have extra hours during the day and uh, I don't have to drive my kids around. Uh, because everyone's on lockdown, so I actually have a little bit more time now to kind of start doing tutorials and, and things again. Um, uh, but again, please, everyone, keep yourself safe. Uh, wash your hands. Don't cough. Be nice to the elderly, because you know I know a lot of uh, people that are old, and you know I don't, you know I don't want them to to, to get anything. So I, I'm doing what I can to stay away from people and things like that. Keep my hands clean. Make sure my kids don't. Don't infect anyone else in case they're infected. Who knows? Um, can't get tested yet if you want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, But again, like I said, just wash your hands. Be sensible. Take care of yourselves. By taking care of yourselves, you help take care of others. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I really just end it like that. And uh, please have a good day and, and keep keep healthy, man. Just keep healthy. Uh, we'll, we'll all work through this. Do some G WebGL while you're stuck at home. You know, good time to start learning, right? See you guys later.